Hi friends, how are you all doing? Hope you're all well and especially having a wonderful holiday. I am having a wonderful holiday and I do have to say before anything, thank you so much to all of the new subscribers that have joined me over the last few days. I posted my booktube newbie tag on Christmas day, which was not intentional. It just literally took me like three days to upload. So once it was uploaded, I had to publish it. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Thank you for all the welcoming comments. A uh, big thank you to a book olive who shouted me out on Twitter, like, what? That was amazing. And I think that a few people retweeted her, so that was really thoughtful and kind. Thank you so much. For posterity's sake, um, I now have 46 subscribers when I had eight before, so there are a lot of new ones. Thank you and welcome and I'm excited about this. I have a different background again today. Now I'm in London. This is my friend's flat, so hopefully she doesn't mind me filming it. I fly out this evening, so I'm just here for like another minute, but I want to film the first part, part one of a December wrap-up. This, full disclosure, will be slightly repetitive to my last video because I mentioned in that video the books that I already read so far this month, and now I'm just going to talk in more detail about those. So let's get straight into it. Uh, the first book that I read this month was Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Just to mention what it's about, I'm not really going to explain it because I feel like most people are familiar with the Disney movie and the plot is not exactly the same as the Disney movie, but if you've watched that then you like know all the characters and their relationship to each other and it happens in Neverland and London and um, what I think I loved about this was that it felt so witty and intelligent there was a lot of amazing imagery that just like caught me off guard and I had to pause and find a sticky or something to mark it with because it was just really beautiful. There were also a lot of moments that it was really nonsensical in this extremely witty and humorous way and I just I adored that. I thought it was really really fun. I, I knew that there was like more to this book than just being a children's story but I didn't know anything about like the, any kind of analysis about the book and when I read it I could f like I could sense the layers in it that there were a lot more things going on than what I was catching on to and uh, I know that J.M. Barry said it's not a children's book it's actually meant for adults and I don't know, I just really love reading a book that definitely like has lots of layers of things going on that I know I'm missing because then it makes me want to reread it and I really, really rarely want to reread books. But I did finish this one and wanted to reread it because I felt like there was more going on. They were that the author was really exercising their their craft. Afterwards I watched Jen Campbell's uh she has a video where she talks about Peter Pan and it was great. I really, really loved it. That blew my mind. If you haven't read it, I would recommend it. I think it's definitely on my favorites of the year list. Quite enjoyed it. The next one was West with the Night by Beryl Markham. And this was a wonderful book. Uh, it, it's a nonfiction, it's a memoir about Mar Mar uh, Beryl Markham's life, of course. She was raised in Kenya. Her father was a horse trainer and then she was a horse trainer. Uh, and then she learned to fly and she did like charter flights uh, for people who were hunting in Africa um, and she would like use planes to find where the elephants were. It was interesting like the content of her life or the, the events of her life that are in the book were very interesting especially because it was a different time and uh, the risks of aviation were much greater so there were definitely a lot more dangers in flying a plane solo in like desolate areas of Africa. In addition to it just being really entertaining content, it was beautifully written. It was, uh, the there were so many moments where I just like wished that I had a physical book so I could mark the quotes. It was just really, really beautiful. It's just really exquisite. In fact, uh, Ernest Hemingway, who was also a great lover of Africa, he wrote, and I'm paraphrasing, but I think he says 
that she writes circles around all of us and puts me to shame as an author. So, I mean, like, it's truly, really beautiful writing. If you haven't read it before, I would really recommend it. This one was also a five star and definitely on my favorites of 2018. The next one that I read was The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith. This one has grown on me since I read it. It was enjoyable. It's, it's a book about, um, it's a fiction book about Precious. I can't remember her last name, but she starts a detective agency and in in Botswana there are several different like small cases that she works on a lot of it is about like her life and the culture there there's bits about like her being a woman and like a lot of people resisting her and her work because she's a woman I mean that's not a huge part of it but like it's more about like the culture like I mentioned it's grown on me since I since I read it um, but one of the things that I think made me enjoy it less when I was reading it is that this being the first book in a very long series I think has some setup for future books but also as it's called the number one ladies detective agency I'd expected it to be sort of mystery driven and I wouldn't classify this book as a mystery at all you're not really following along like you're trying to save them with her you're just reading about her doing it it's not a mystery and i think if i had known that going in i would have enjoyed it more because i just was like i was expecting a mystery and i really love mysteries so um in retrospect i see that it, that's not really what it's about so now i do want to go on and read the second book and see how i feel about that um yeah I also listened to this one and it was a lot of fun to listen to it as well because you kind of got the accents and things like that. I think I'd give it like a four stars right now. Um, it's it's not as high up there as I think I had expected, but uh, it was still a really good book. It was a good book. Yeah. Next one that I read was um, Emma, Emma by Jane Austen. And I listened to this one. I mentioned this before in my last video, which I said this is being repetitive, but I read the first half of this book last summer like during the summer and then i set it down and got distracted by other books so i picked up in the middle of the book and i listened to the second half because we were driving i love the story of emma it's yeah it's like my favorite to watch uh but i think that after reading the book i found that i still enjoy the adaptation better than the book and i was really sad to find that in the book uh, Emma just comes across as so much more childish and juvenile than I had expected and than I had sort of experienced in the movies. Another big one is just that like Jane Austen is amazing but like with that book I just think she needed an editor. There were so many long drawn out several several page long interactions that they gave us like this much bit of plot and took up like 20 pages and that's fine but it just, it just went on so long so I guess I guess that's probably part partially like my preference as a reader that I just uh found the me the meanderings of the daily life part of the book a little bit too slow spoilers like if you don't know what it's about I found with Darcy or not Darcy goodness um Emma and Mr. Knightley that I didn't feel like their romance was convincing and maybe this is because I stopped in the middle of the book so maybe that's why that's fine but the whole time Emma is being really flippant back and forth and trying to decide if she has like feelings for Mr. Churchill it's like in all terms of relationship she's not actually very perceptive or accurate in her own reading of her own feelings and then when it comes to Mr. Knightley it feels like in a matter of three pages that she's all of a sudden completely confident that she loves him and based on her past actions like if I were her friend I would be like mm, give it like a few months and see if you still like him because you're just really all over the place like a teenage girl yeah i just wasn't convinced that that was like oh the one and it was gonna stick and i like hated that i felt that way i don't mean to be overly critical i still love jane austen i still love that story i'm just holding to the the bbc adaptation 
I like that. The next one that I read is called A Heart Revealed by Josie S. Kilpack. I read this one because I have never had like an e-reader before, but my parents had an e-reader and so while I was down there, I figured out how to link up my library to it and all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many e-books available to me that I had no idea were available to me. This one popped up and they had been listening to Tarzan, which I will talk about next. And I was just wanting like a polar opposite kind of book. So this one is like a Regency romance. It was also like Emma, but a contemporary written Regency romance. I used to love this kind of book when I was a teenager. It's sort of like nostalgic to read them and so if I can find one that's like decently enjoyable then they're really fun to read I think. I consider these kind of books just like a little quick treat. I'm sorry if it seems like I'm spoiling it, I'm not really. It's the kind of book where it's like not if but when the two obvious love interests get together. Amber is like this really unlikable character and she's the the rage of the season. She's really unlikable and a jerk to a lot of people including a man named Thomas and she then starts to lose her hair. Um, there's a condition of what it's called which I can't remember off the top of my head but uh, at the time obviously they didn't know that it like have a medical explanation for it at the time, I mean like it's happening in the past, but it's written contemporarily. But she starts to lose her hair and she's surrounded by all these really really superficial and vain people but now she's losing her hair and she's really insecure about it and um, feels like all ashamed about it and so she runs away to the country. Uh, and she happens to run away to the area where Thomas lives and is from. And so it was actually a really sweet story, like a really sweet romance. It's definitely really cheesy and extremely predictable, uh, but it's just a cute romance. If that's your thing, then I would recommend that. Um, if not, then we'll move on. The next book that I read was Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Also, who, who names like a middle name Rice? Is it supposed to be pronounced Reese? No. Is R I C E. It's just like a really weird middle name. Anyway, my grandpa loved Tarzan, which is really the reason that I read this and that I wanted to like it was because my grandpa read Tarzan. He had read all of the books as a child. He lived in Africa for part of his life too. I remember watching the black and white movies with him. Um, it, it was just something that he loved. So I really wanted to like it, but when I was reading it, I had a little bit of a hard time because it just did not age well. There are so many aspects of it that are now very, very racist and sexist. And to be honest, I wanted to be able to forgive it, like be forgiving of those parts because um, that it's a product of its time, like, like it was just really adhering to the time that it was made in. But this one just kind of got on my nerves because it was a little bit too ridiculous in some parts, like the women were so frail. Um, one of, I don't think it was Jane, but like her assistant that was with her, when a lion comes to where they are in the little house, um, she just faints, like she just faints from fear. and. I was like, I, <laughs> is she wearing like a really tight corset? Like I don't know any women who would actually faint out of fear when their life is literally in danger. It just seems really biologically unhelpful. So anyway, and uh, a lot of the racism sort of was done in this like dignified way that was being really, like trying really hard to explain itself through science. Um, yeah, it was it was weird. Anyway, the story for starters is definitely not the same as the Disney adaptation of Tarzan. It does give you kind of the general gist. The Claytons, they're abandoned in Africa and survive there for a little bit, but then are killed and their baby Tarzan is raised by apes and then um, the porters and a few other people come to Africa and they meet up. That's just a general plot that you need to know, I guess. I, this, like, story-wise, it was okay, but I think what would have helped me enjoy it more is if I had known, or if someone had told me, 
that it's a fantasy before I read it. And it's not a fantasy in the like magic and dragons kind of sense. It's a fantasy in the sense that the story asks for a suspension of belief that is just unreasonable for normal reality. There's so many things that happen that are just like <clears throat> completely impossible. Like for starters, just even a baby actually surviving being raised by apes. Um, and second, like he stumbles across his, the, the home where his parents had lived and stumbles across some reading books, like children's books, and he just teaches himself how to read. And like enough that he can read fluently and they also like learns French in like three days so there's a lot of things like that that are kind of I don't know just too ridiculous that I would just wondered if this was meant to be humorous in the way that it's so ridiculous but I couldn't tell um because it was written a long time ago like I just couldn't get the feel for whether or not I was meant to like laugh at how ridiculous it was or if I was really supposed to believe that like basically a feral child could teach himself to read fluently um without any like language construct in his brain anyway it was interesting to read and to understand like what that you know where the story comes from and i'm glad because my grandpa that i did read it but um now i really wish that he was alive and i could ask him like how he felt about it and whether or not he enjoyed it part of the because of the nostalgia of like reading it as a child in the 30s or something like that you know if that was more the reason that he loved it so much so those are the first six books that i read so far this month they're the exact same ones i mentioned that i read in my last video because the rest of the books i read i think will like it'll make a nice even part one part two if i just leave the rest for my next video um if you want to watch that then subscribe or if it's already out then just go watch it um thank you for watching this and listening to my thoughts on these matters um again thank you to all of you that have subscribed that's been lots of fun that's enough for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in another video so bye also, sorry I've been talking really quiet, like I hope you can hear me. Um, there have been people sleeping in the other room, so I didn't want to be very loud. But hopefully it doesn't sound like I've been like whispering this whole time, so thank you.